Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Psychology Network. Today's topic which we would be studying is the past model of intelligence or the past theory of intelligence which is also called the neuropsychological theory of intelligence given by Das, Carr and Parilla. So before diving into the theory, let me take few seconds to explain why this theory came into being because when this theory came into being, there were other theories already uh, present, the theories of intelligence. So some researchers argued that the most popular IQ test batteries uh, included test items which were more assessing the knowing of a person rather than the thinking of a person. What the person already knew, these test batteries were assessing those and not what the person would think in a particular situation or think and process. So this was the criticism the researchers based this model on and they wanted to broaden the scope of the abilities which were being measured by the IQ test. So what Das, Naglieri and Kirby in 1994 proposed a neurocognitive theory of intelligence which was called the PASS model. PASS stands for planning, attention, simultaneous and successive processing and uh, the way to measure these uh, four things they developed the cognitive assessment system here you can see the WISC which is the bachelor intelligent uh, scale for children and here it's the cognitive assessment system now let's dive into the theory so what is past model saying also another thing the past theory of intelligence is rooted in the work of Luria 1966 and 1973 uh, on cognition and according to which uh, it is stated that the human cognition consists of three things or all are interconnected but these are the three things I am seeing separately for you to understand which is the first one is three separate but interrelated brain system. There are three brain systems. We will be talking about them just in a second. The second one is four cognitive processes are there. The third one is all these four cognitive processes are embedded in a knowledge base. So we would be talking about the three brain systems. Now these brain systems are referred as functional units. What is the first brain system? It is the attention arousal. Now this is also responsible for two cognitive tasks, which is maintaining general alertness of the person while doing the task and controlling the attention and resisting to distraction. First is maintaining the alertness throughout when the person is doing the task and that the attention varies from one place to another. So attention arousal also controls attention and resists any kind of distraction. The second brain system is the storage and integration uh, of the information as well as the grouping of the information in simultaneous arrays or successive series. Now simultaneous processing basically uh, the same type of um, Stimulus are put into the same kind of groupings. Basically, the schema is being formed for a particular, uh, suppose, a particular stimuli. And successive processing is suppose when you are given a list of words and you have to remember the list of words, uh, how it is given. Like if it is given cat, dog, tree. So you have to remember as cat, dog, tree. So that is the successive pro processing. The third brain system, it is the planning system that is involved in decision making of a person, evaluating, programming and regulation of the present and future behavior. If there is a, suppose there are two job offers which are given to you and which one you would choose and how would it affect your present and future behavior. So this entire thing is a planning system. These were the three brain system. Now the four cognitive processes which this theory is talking about is planning, attention, simultaneous processing and successive processing. Planning literally means the planning which we generally study in this area of uh, the field of psychology. Simply, it is the cognitive process by which the person determines, chooses and applies and then evaluates solution to problems or whatever the goal he want to reach. Now suppose there are problems and uh, problems of a person and the goals that the person has to reach. So the person has done the planning. Now to stick to the planning, he needs the ability of attention. So he selecti selectively focuses on those tasks which would lead to the 
solution of the problem or to the goal he is targeting. We studied the simultaneous processing and the successive processing in the pre previous slide. It is the same. Again, I would repeat it, which is simultaneous processing is that when the individual incorporates the elements of stimuli into a conceptual whole. Suppose your eyes are tied, um, closed basically, and you are taken to a room and then your eyes are opened. Suppose you see a blackboard, you see many chairs and tables, so you uh, you put two and two together and you understand this is a classroom so you see it as a conceptual whole it's a concept classroom is a concept you are not seeing the duster alone or the chairs alone you are seeing it as a conceptual whole now the successive processing is the cognitive ability whereby the individual process the stimuli in serial order if i say seven eight two nine and i tell you to remember that so you remember it as seven eight two nine successively so that ability needs successive processing. This was your four cognitive processes and these are embedded into the knowledge base. Now, what is the knowledge base? It can be divided into two categories, the tacit or experiential, the formal or instructed. Experiential means what you learn from the culture, what you learn from relationships, which you have from your parents, from your school, that is your experiential learning. Instructed learning is acquired through formal instructions, basically, which are given to you. Suppose the world knowledge, suppose, uh, and this experiential learning would be different in different cultures. Suppose I say Tata. In India, Tata would mean bye-bye. So that is experiential learning Indians would have because they would associate Tata with bye-bye. Now, Tata with bye-bye may not be associated in Japanese culture or American culture or any other culture. So that is your experiential learning. And formal or instructed learning is through the formal instruction, like don't eat like that, don't sit like that. These are your instructed formal learnings. So this was all uh, which you had to know about the past model of intelligence. So we studied the interrelated brain systems, the three interrelated brain system, which is this one which are also called functional units. Then we studied about the four cognitive processes. You must remember these four cognitive processes, the most important one. Uh, planning, attention, simultaneous processing, and successive processing. You would easily remember planning and attention, but you might forget these two words, simultaneous and successive processing. And in the MCQ, which UGC Net asks, they might just confuse you. So this, this is something which you must remember from this uh, topic very well and then the knowledge base which is tacit or experiential or formal or instructed so today we studied the uh, past theory of intelligence which is the neuropsychological theory i've already covered factors factor theories in my other videos i've already covered cattell's fluid and crystallized intelligence and jensen's theory jensen's theory of mental functioning so few cognitive theories and emotional intelligence theories are left so follow and like this channel so you can keep being updated about the other videos i make and go to my channel look through the playlist and you can find the factor theories which i've already done and the other two theories of cognitive theories of intelligence which i've completed you can check those out thank you so much for listening to this video please subscribe and like this channel so because it's free there the information which you are getting here is free so like and subscribe so you can get updated with all the knowledge you can receive.